in the annals of great woodworkers, you should not neglect the name of Thomas Chippendale. You should study his furniture and his business. For there is an enterprising spirit and craftsmanship that emerges from his shop. For in England and in the 18th century, crowds of cabinet makers would suddenly part, lean forward to hear his words, and try to shake his hand. For Chippendale was confident and self assured that he was the best cabinet maker in all of London and in England and maybe all of the British colonies. And maybe he was. But despite his fame within the industry, he was just a tradesman with an apartment above his shop. No title or powdered wig for a mere tradesman. And history would record no more than his date of baptism, marriage, and death, with no portraits to record his image. But he left us a book of illustrations in over 600 pieces of furniture. And these, plus the records of his business, can offer many lessons to today's woodworker. So, son, what are you doing? Nothing, Dad. Son, you're a natural carver. I didn't know that. The chisel and your carving may be the key to your success. Thomas, woodworking is a competitive trade, and you must have talent and ambition. Carving like this will be noticed by Lord Fox at, at the Farnley Hall. You will build a reputation for quality work. You must seek out your future customers and convince them of your worth. His first step was to walk into a tea house to get his bearings. Hey, Barkey, I'm looking to set up my cabinet making shop. Where do you recommend I go? Oh, well, uh, most of the traders try to get near St. Martin's of the Field because all the lords and ladies do their shopping there. Chippendale found a place to live and to work only a few blocks away. Most evenings he would stop by a local coffee house to catch up on the news. His fellow tradesmen gathered there and shared the news of new commissions in the latest fashions. In one night when Chippendale was feeling especially low, he met 
Matthew Darley. The next evening, Chippendale cornered Darley into a serious discussion. I want to run my own shop. The guy I work with has no talent or ambition. I got an idea. Give me a minute. What I need is a book of designs like this sketch. Give the customer just enough to visualize a piece of furniture so they can imagine what the real thing would be in their own home. I'll give them a book with all my versions of designs and the folks would flow to my door. Chippendale spent months creating the ideas and sketches for his new publication. It would be driven by several principles. Now I've written an introduction and have 160 individual illustrations of the design for household furniture. On the day of publication, Darley offered Chippendale his copy. The customers loved to see that each sketch provided a variety to fit any taste. One could find upholstered chairs and sofas. With two or three dimensional profiles of the various tables. In the elaborate pieces, profiles were made with and without fabric. At the same time that Chippendale was creating the original sketches for his book, he was looking for upper-class gentlemen to sponsor his new business. Friends helped him by finding a new property on St. Martin's Lane and finding James Rainey, who was interested in investing in Thomas Chippendale. <coughs> Chippendale, tell me. Why should I invest in your business? Well, sir, Mr. Darley has found a fine location on St. Martin's Lane that has three separate lots. There are apartments on either side of a space that I can use for a sales room. Behind the properties on the street are several outbuildings that we shall see that can be converted to workshops for cabinet making and chair construction. So let's go see these outbuildings. In this shed, mahogany will dry for at least one year. Morning, boss. These chairs are some of my most popular, and there's enough carved features to secure a reasonable profit. The next order will be a set of ladder back armchairs and the side chairs for the dining room. I love to receive work orders that allow the chisel to carve and create 
those gentle curves. Good day, Master. This three-story ship is the heart of our campus. Currently, we have 20 campers. We get orders for simple breakfast tables for traders in London wanting to impress their friends. Other orders will create fancy desks to grace the library of the titled gentry up in the Yorkshires. But that is in the future. Of course. Fill our cushions with the softest feathers of Hudson Bay geese and provide a variety of fabrics from silk to leather. was the ultimate furnishing of the 18th century. The looking glass and its frame. Ooh. Well, that completes our tour. What do you think? Well, I'm very impressed. Naturally. I want to invest in your business. With those few words, Chippendale's future was insured. As the years have passed, Chippendale's furniture and his reputation has spread throughout the world. He remains the only woodworker whose furniture now represents its own furniture style.